I think we can see there's a very strong theme running through all those presentations this evening. It's been, been very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't really time for discussion and questions and answers at this session. But as I say, please go and talk to the people here on the platform over the course of the weekend because they've all spent a lot of time and effort to get here. They've got some interesting information to exchange with you all. Uh, and people like Amanda, particularly, have been in the States, they seem to not take opportunity while she's here while she talks to them. Uh, I want to start planning to, to wind this up fairly quickly, but it's just one other thing we would like to do before we do that. Well, two things. Anybody who came to Hazards 2017 would have noticed that I was given a particular job or asked to perform a particular task at the end of this session, this equivalent session. I've been called out of two years' retirement to be told I have to do the same thing again. <laughs> um, I, it's a long time since I've been with really so many people, I have to say. Uh, most of my time is in the garden now with, with one of my grandsons, which is doing it the world ago. What I'm going to be called upon to do is in just a few minutes to mark the contribution that one of our guests here today, Hugh Robertson, has made to the <laughs> <Council. laughs> First of all, of course, when he was um, head of bargaining and, and whatever it was at Unison, uh, and before he became the TUC. In fact, that's quite a long relationship. The first, you, you tend to remember things about relationships, don't you? So the first lie that you ever told me, <laughs> <laughs> I found him up and said, Will you be putting in for the TUC job? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no possibility. The next time I heard from him, he's been appointed. Hugh's predecessor was a guy called Owen Tudor. And for the 2003 conference, which was held in London, we invited Owen Tudor to give us a TUC view on articulation. And it was so long ago, I forget what that issue was. Tudor was over the moon. He actually phoned me up and said, I am the first TUC bureaucrat that's ever been invited to address the Hazards Conference. And that's what he did. He came, he sat on the platform, he gave us the benefit of his knowledge and experience, and it went. And that was the TUC's first real uh, intervention and participation in the Hazards Conference. Of course, the TUC weren't particularly happy with the Hazards movement. There's a whole, his oops, a whole history of that. Um, my brother Martin, who taught trade union education at South Bank Poly in London for a number of years, used to contribute to the column in Hazard's Bulletin, uh, News from Unions. Uh, he was very sure that that should never be made public. Andy Fairclough, who was a direct TUC employee at the National Education Centre, who did a lot to set up the first TUC health and safety courses, used to contribute to Hazard's Bulletin and Hazard's Magazine. And we used to take the piss out of Andy by saying, you know, if you don't do what we're after, we'll tell the TUC. <laughs> <laughs> and he took that seriously. I'm afraid Andy didn't, Andy's sense of humour didn't match mine. <laughs> what those of us who are long time recidivists and, and Hazard's activists and, and whatever, know that since you came to the team, see that relationship has changed quite considerably. <coughs> and it's become a relationship where the TUC sees a real value in the hazards movement. It sees a value in the people who are activists, it sees the value in academics like Andy and the others, and Rory O'Neill and Hazards Magazine and Hazards Bobbity. So, um, um, my belief, and I think the belief of most of us, is that that's down to Hugh and the way that Hugh has done things. And earlier on, somebody said Hugh came at this from an organisers and activist perspective. And that's a great thing for the TUC, for people who are organisers and activists to, get in, to, to become 
people and didn't post that could make a difference. So what kind of things has she done? Well, Hilda Palmer has been invited on a number of occasions to call and address the TUC's health and safety specialists regular bi-monthly meetings. Uh, when I've been attending those as, as a UCU, <coughs> as a UCU representative, I surreptitiously slipped out hazard campaign stuff and hearing the chair on my own that said this this is a TUC meeting, John, not a hazard campaign. I said, fine you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to say we used to send in huge numbers of things like the, the sponsorship form and the application form which you circulated through his, his meetings at the TUC. A great thing that you did was establish risks and Ronnie O'Neill, who edits Howard Hazard's magazine, was appointed as the editor of risks and that's been going as an activist bulletin effectively for how many years? 15 years. Something like that. Hugh himself contributes article to Hazards. God, I don't know if John Monks must be turning his play. <laughs> oh, no, no, uh, I'm not sure what you still think, and uh, not something to really talk about, but Hugh always used to say, as long as there are issues going on, so it, it, it'd be on the front of the or you know, talk to Rory or somebody, and something would come up. It was, very much a case of you might want to take this up or you might want to be that angle on this. So we get some stuff from that. <coughs> Massive contributions to this event. New comes, and apart from when he's got to rush off to Europe, because he is partly a bureaucrat, not always <laughs> into it. Um, he'll chair sessions, he'll speak at sessions, he runs workshops. You know? and, and he does all those kind of things which make houses has his confidence what it is. And that's a massive contribution. <sighs> He's even asked people in the Hazards campaign to become the editors of the TUC's Hazards at Work bulletin. Mm -hmm. And for the last three issues, me, Hilda, Ivy, Caroline, and others have contributed to that process. And Janet. And Janet. Janet. Yes. Anybody on that? I did, I, did, I, did, I did this with the asbestos groups once, and I missed out the client bank. <laughs> and there, there is currently an edit going on, and again, that's, that's being done through the Manchester, through Manchester Hazard Centre. <coughs> Things you don't know about you, he's a championship boring dancer, and he still does it twice a week. <laughs> but I'm not here to do the Pasado with him, <laughs> even if I could. So we've organised just a little bit of a presentation for you, and I'll give it to him now. It's quite an iconic health and safety stroke workers object. Chance Jackal, 
and Jankel put Dury's words to music. And that resulted in what for many people one of the seminal punk rock albums, New Books and Panties. On the sleeve of that, there are pictures of the band members, and Dury adds little comments. And it says Chaz Jankel had a bloody good job too. And I say, you obviously had a bloody good job too. <laughs> Yeah, right early in the workshops, please, because that's the first group 